Right, right. Okay, well, no, that's no, we want it's all about kind of answering the challenges, and certainly is so on my channel too. You know, was there anything that we kind of broached up? I mean, maybe you want to weigh in on the idea that does atheism, from your perspective, um, have something positive to bring to the picture, or is it kind of just a negation of kind of all assertions? What What do you kind of What do you kind of? Um, well, I, I guess I would phrase the question differently. Um, I, 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 a classic How thing. How dare you? People, yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Uh, a classic thing people bring up in these conversations from in, when you talk about natural sciences is Isaac Newton was a quest Christian, therefore everything he did was biblically based. And Isaac Newton didn't derive his theories of mathematics from the Bible. He just was a Christian that did math. So I think that would be the argument I would try to make is what are we talking that was you can directly derive from the Bible or Christianity versus something that Christians just happen to do? No, I think I haven't made that point repeatedly. Okay, like, like mor morality. I might have left. Yeah. Sorry. Morality and, you know, transcendent things. And, yeah, some of these you could argue that it's just correlations, right? But we yeah. have we have you know hundreds of years or you know of you know we have thousands of years of Christianity and we could see how these communities compare right so we have data right well but then you get in the kind of like you guys are bringing up slavery you know slavery is a is a being anti slavery is a modern Christian point of view very much so there were Christian abolitionists yes. But there were lots of Christian supporters of it, so you can't really say Christianity 1500s. Christianity definitely was a facet of slavery. But see, the, here's the thing too: you can't go look at the actions of Christians in general and call that Christianity. We have to see what what it means to be a Christian and what it prescribes, basically, right? So if if it prescribes slavery, like in the sense of like you know, I guess. Like American slavery, like when we took Africans. Or yeah, whatever. chattel slavery. Yeah, chattel slavery. Does does the Bible does Christianity prescribe that? Is that what we're sp supposed to do? Well, my, what I would again, I before we go any further, this ain't my area of expertise. Ain't trying to be you know Lord or high atheist of this conversation. But you know, if you looked at I, the way I view it, if you look at theism in the 1700s, you would be arguing a very different tune so did theism change i disagree that you i you could people have distorted the bible for since its inception so it's, because abolition really wasn't a thing until what the renaissance when like as gavin said great britain abolished it in the 1830s or whatever so no no that that's false Christi christianity has uh, abolished slavery in christian europe as early as the fifth century all the way up into the 10th century, there was no slavery in Christian Europe. So over and over again in the history of our well, but there was Earth. there was slavery in like Spanish colonies, Dutch colonies, stuff like that. Sure, so, and those were Christian nations. Yeah, so, there's, there's no such thing as a no, no, they they weren't Christian nations. That well, then, what then do you what are you talking about? Scotsman here, aren't we? I mean, well, what year are you talking about? Because I said the fifth to the tenth century. Well, I I gotta Google an example off the top okay. of my head, but from the fifth to the tenth century. Um, well, then from the tenth to the seventeenth century, was there slavery? Well, sure. Once Muhammad came riding on his bloody horse. <laughs> well, the Dutch slave trade was in the sixteen hundreds to the eighteen hundreds. Right. Yeah. So and and the Dutch were you would categorize them as a Christian nation. I don't know what that, that time Christian nation. What does that mean? Yeah, is it prescribed by Christianity? Is well, it? that's the, that's the question I'm trying to get at. And I mean, if you slave someone, are you following Christian principle or something? You know what I mean? Because otherwise, we both agree that Christians do horrible things, atheists yeah. do horrible things, and yeah. vice versa, right? But you you were making the argument where you the argument being made. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Was that Atheists did these bad things, therefore atheism. But no, apparently, I didn't make that argument. 
Well, that's kind of the way I was taking the argument. I, that's how I most atheists it. take it because they take it personally instead of actually thinking about what the argument's saying. If I could chime in just a little bit, yeah, see, that's, me. that's the reason I was saying like you don't have a, a direct definition of atheism. So you'll have like Smokey was saying, you'll have um, different people give different definitions, which is okay, but that can lead to a lot of different um, paths. And um, Christianity is more prescribed. Uh, um, granted that you know people can you know get off of their doctrine, and we have seen you know some horrible things happen because of that, but. Um, you at least have some foundation you can go back to correct it on. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I'm finally having that conversation too, but read the yeah, I, we, I agree. There is an issue. Like, what do you think Christianity prescribes? What, what, what is the sum of the command? So by that, are you asking me the Bible says this the Bible says that what did Jesus, okay. Being a Christian is following Jesus. These well, things, right? the book of Philemon, <laughs> isn't that about Paul writing to a slave to return to his owner? Okay, well, we're talking about the actual That's a good point, but I'm just saying, Jesus told us to love God and love each other as we love ourselves, right? Sure. So what What about that teaching would be like, you know, enslave people and do horrible things, you know? I'm saying that's directly a point. Well, again, I, I mean, if, if, you, if you only have to go off of specifically Jesus' words in the four Gospels, then uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's, that's to me, Christianity is okay, more than Jesus' words. We could go off of, I mean, I'm just I saying, mean, you well, should well, be the pastor. Can, can, can we look at the slave that Paul was referring to to go back to his master? Do you, do you know anything about that slave, whether or not he was there voluntarily? Was he forced to be there? Or? Uh, I have to look. I have to look up the book of Philemon. It's only like two okay. pages, but I don't have it memorized. <laughs> okay. Well, if he voluntarily wanted to work in that position, would that be okay with you morally? But the whole point is that he did that. He went away, and Jesus told him to go back to his master. Right. So right. If he wanted to be voluntarily there, there, he wouldn't have left. Right. Go back to your employer. Right. Well, not employer. So was a slave. Right. So if so, it's a voluntary situation. He didn't force him to go back. He didn't ground him up and grab him in some sort of slave. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it when when the slave uh, slave escapes and then they go catch him? All right. But well, uh, again, if I if, if I have my Bible facts wrong, let me know. But so Paul so he was wrote there voluntarily. The right. So he Paul was there. wrote the letter to tell. Philemon the slave to go back to his master. Right. So did so did he have a choice to go back or not go back? Paul's argument was you should go back to your you should go back, slave. right? You ought to go back, right? Because you have a responsibility. So how, isn't that, that a pro-slavery so. stance? But yeah. is it? But but isn't slavery? Isn't the idea of slavery in the twenty first century the enslavement? You know the difference between enslaving someone and a slave. So it's you're making a like indentured servant slavery argument here? If he's an indentured servant, then that means that he owes a debt, right? So he needs if, to pay if, back that debt. Yes. If was he? I'm 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 uh, I'm, I, I'm again, asking I, you, I memorize you know, the book of Philemon. What do you well, think I'm asking you you know anything you? about the fact that he's saying you ought to do something with it should indicate to you that he's not a slave, a fugitive. Well, <laughs> but you you make that assumption. Though. Or I, I don't I know if I think that's a safe contract. Well, I think that's a safe assumption if he's if he's urging him to do it and not saying, you know, just round him up and get this guy. He escaped. I think that would be a, I think <laughs> I, that would be I, a, I'm a sorry, I can't I can't agree with that argument. I'm sure yeah. escaped so, slaves so, <laughs> I'm sure so, escaped slaves in America. Are you, or are you familiar with the Florida. Jubilee? Are you familiar with the Jubilee? Even in the in, if you go back to the I know the X Men character. I'm sorry. I don't know the X Men character. Oh, the X -Men? Yeah, I don't. No, it's just you know um, that where Hebrew slaves and prisoners would be free and debts would be forgiven um, from the year of the Jubilee. I don't know if you've ever. I don't know if you've uh, not seen the Bible. Like the okay. do over year. Yeah, which I think it's uh, really cool. It's kind of like bankruptcy <laughs> in modern times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's basically uh, bankruptcy without bankruptcy laws. That was the way that people paid their debt by working yeah. for another individual. So yes, if you 
Oh, if you uh, owed, you, you had to, back, yeah. but you were not forced to go back. There was not. That's not enslaving a person. Uh, visa or med credit cards that I take out, but they didn't force me to take out the credit card. But yeah, I ought to pay it back. So I think Paul was just urging him to do the right thing. So it wasn't a um, a system or a situation where there was a taskmaster, and um, you know Paul was rounding him up with the dogs get get the bloodhounds we're going after no that's not what was going on here any any slavery quote unquote slavery in the bible that was of that sort where you're forcing them against their will it was punishable by death in deuteronomy uh or exodus i think well that was for israeli slaves not no, for no, that was for all people that was not for just israeli well, slaves. Or what christians do you see uh pushing for slavery now like what sect well that would be teaching from i just like be specific instead of just making these just claims. You know what I well, mean? Well, that's why I said the phrasing of the question, I think, would be different because the argument to be made is that the uh, secularism of society has in part resulted in the abolishment and the looking downward upon exactly. slavery really and the renaissance and stuff like that. That would be the argument to make okay. because, again, you can find... right. It, chattel slavery was defended biblically by people in the South. They pulled up Bible verses to defend their statements, and they were, I'm sure, very just in their opinion. Okay, at so that time. what they did was the same thing that you're doing. They took passages out of context, not even doing the research on what they're talking about. That's exactly the same mistake. Well, that you're, you're saying that now in your secular in your secular society viewpoint. I'm sure no, they no, thought no, that no, it was right, right. then. You're saying. Uh, well, well, hold on, may I? Okay. Let me spit this out real quick. I just want to say, or you're saying that morality is progressing. So you believe yes. you believe morality is objective, then, right? Say that again, please. You believe morality is objective, then? Wait, you this is a big topic. This isn't spitting out real quick. Well, <laughs> you've known that he's he's claiming that moral uh, objectivity exists under his secular view. I, yeah, but, but to discuss that would be a whole topic. I want to like actually talk about I, what they were talking about. Uh, yeah, if you want to, you guys choose. Ahead, which Nicholas, way to join yeah. This. yeah, well, yeah so um, yeah, let's let Nicholas chime in. It is kind of a slavery topic, though. I think Nicholas, that's what you're contributing, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so, right. um, um, no, they were not just in their interpretation of the scripture. In the scripture, the penalty for kidnapping is death. In the scripture, the penalty for injuring one of your slaves is they go free. And the penalty for beating one of your slaves to death is death. So their system had nothing to do with the biblical system. They were strictly unjust, being hypocrites against themselves in the scripture. So to say you're sure they were just in their interpretation was extremely well, they, unfair they to us. They were just is what I was trying to say. They oh, that, that, that's completely different, but um, thanks for the clarification. Yeah, that's why I meant to say so. I um, confused. And if I could add some slight clarification for the sake of the digestion of, of, of the historical context appropriately, um, from what I've seen and researched, you know, you have a very disgusting, horrible, subhuman slave trade, you know, that has kind of been inherited through European ancestry and through European slave trade and also Islam slave trade, you yes. know, which, which had a tendency to very, very much dehumanize uh, the people that were slaves. Now, we, we have a perspective of why, why, of course, the Muslims did it, but the question would be why did the Europeans um, and, and the like tend to take that perspective in the African slave trade? And it's not Christianity. They weren't pulling up verses in the Bible to justify the treatment of African slaves. No, what they were doing is they were referencing evolutionary secular theory which said that blacks were less than human. They were basically animals. They were lesser evolved versions of us. Therefore, there shouldn't be any actual moral unction with the enslavement of black people, nor, no more so than there should be with animals or monkeys. And this is how the culture itself integrated. Now, what you see is the anti-abolitionists who attempted to use scripture to justify their case did not start doing so until after the abolitionists started.
the abolitionists started pulling up scripture to back up their case to say that the African slave trade was monstrous, cruel, and inhuman, and also against Christian ethics. And the anti-abolitionists then went to the same reference source material to try to make their case. No one was ever going to the Bible to make the case for the African slave trade, not once. This is, my, this is the point I was trying to make was that that they have no secular secular has no, have no way to say that it's wrong in the first place. So of course they're going to the Bible because that's the only way you can say these things are wrong or right. And if you you know you could make some arbitrary standard if you want, but it's arbitrary. Might I add they also had to passages like Genesis um, chapter 6, I think the curse of Cain um, was blackness, and that's how they tried. Yeah, that was the big thing too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the rich, you filthy, rotten Canaanite. Yeah. I think the Mormon church still held to something like that or, or, or similar. You no, know, the Mormons, no, 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 the Mormons believe that you were given a choice prior to, to being born and that if you chose to align with Lucifer, you were born black. black. Wow. And if you aligned with Christ, you were born white. Yeah. That's that's like a, you were cursed, basically. That was the notion. Yeah. Even yeah. Being, yeah. And that cursed. actually allowed the Mormons for many generations uh, to claim that the uh, those of black skin were spiritually cursed. Yeah. Yes, that is in their books. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, the Jehovah's that, Witnesses, by the way, also believe that for a season themselves. Uh, yeah. A lot of people don't know that, but that's true. Until they figured yeah. they couldn't get as many black members. They kept mm -hmm. saying that probably. Right, but when you read the scripture, nothing can be further from the truth. The word ham means hot. It doesn't mean black. Uh, Ham was the one that was cursed, not not uh, not Cain. Uh, but the idea of, of preciousness, the idea of equal worth, uh, of every human being uh, equal, is rooted in Christianity. Christians believe that God places an in, uh, infinite value. He, the scripture says that he, on every human life, that God knows the number of hairs on our head. Amen. He cares about us so. So Christian salvation does not attach itself to a person's uh, tribe or religion or, or, or not religion, but um, <laughs> race agree. or ethnicity uh, or where you live. It's an individual matter. So, uh, so um, I, uh, so, yeah. real quick, uh, I did do a little bit more looking in the book of Philemon, and I had my interpretation of the situation incorrect. So, well, good on um, you for admitting that. Good on you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, Philemon, slave is better I had it backwards. Yeah. Philemon was the owner, not the slave. Right. So, yeah, yeah well, then, even uh, that, that word slave there is better translated worker. Either way, yeah. You should, and then, uh, if I may, um, I'm piggybacking back on what Smokey said because um, I think we also have to look at the economic history that people came from. Um, the Roman system, and then the Roman system corrupted Christianity, and then also um, the system of Islam with its slavery, and then Europe coming from the Roman system and also having to economically compete with Islam, just like we, you know, have to compete with China today, if we even are, <laughs> but um, that kind of thing, so for safety, you know, and so by having to compete with what they were doing, they probably resorted to some of the same stuff, and um so there's just a whole integrated system of how all this came about over history. But um, it's not yeah. because Christ went on the cross, so then they were like, now let's do slavery <laughs> more so evil. I guess I um, should clarify the thought. Um, first of all, again, I'm going to say this a lot. I'm no historian of slavery, so I'm just trying to play devil's advocate more or less here. Uh, secondly... I don't think necessarily that the Bible cond Bible condones slavery. I think the ba the Bible would at best be uh, apathetic or middling about the concept, as Nicholas said, mostly because slavery was very much a daily part of the lives of the writers. Um, and then, as slavery was moved away from that, I don't think you can quote Christianity as the reason for that because slavery the uh, motion away from slavery coincided, I would argue, with the rise of secularism in the places that slavery was 
uh, abolished. Yeah, please explain that. That's what I want you to explain. Like, what does that mean? I'm, I'm confused. I'm I'm just have one. For more morality. I just want to know how you parse that out. Well, wait a minute. If if the Bible puts the punishment at death, I mean, how much more greater do you want the punishment to be? Well, for, again, for I would yes, yes sure. The, the Bible says family? that, but the Bible somehow did not manage to get rid of slavery, and when it came back up, well, all these people well, that were. All, all the people of Europe in the 1500s, 1600s. That's because they didn't follow. You well, the then you want to do a no Scotsman fallacy. Oh, no, 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 so 300 some odd years saw that verse? Yeah, they did. They just ignored it, just like you ignore the verses in the Bible today. But somehow, uh, again, I can, I guess if you, if, uh, what do I say? You, it's, it's, I don't know how to. <laughs> don't you yeah. ignore the scripture? Yeah. Do you yeah. take them seriously? Or yeah. do you? Yeah. No, uh, I, I, I obviously I don't take the Bible seriously. Okay, then. Like, so there you go. Say. They were probably, they were probably. Uh, but I they, also they, don't proclaim to be a Christian. They, they well, I want probably, to address this. Probably, right, I, I have a question probably, about this. They were probably closeted. All right, hold on, hold on. Let's let's. Henry came in and he hasn't. He's also another atheist. So let's let's maybe let. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, he knows more yeah. about slavery than I oh, do. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I think slavery's bad. Uh, <laughs> well, that's that's because that's because you're you're an idiot, Henry. But but go. <laughs> for thinking slavery is wrong i guess i am but um yeah no my question was uh because you were saying well, the bible says like kidnapping and stealing like uh stealing people is is bad so that type of slavery it, like the uh the atlantic slave trade is immoral but you think it's okay if like uh, if the people owe a debt or, or something or or if uh like if you i don't know if you know about uh anarcho capitalists they, they think it's all right it, like if you sell yourself into slavery like that's yeah. no kidding that's okay. that's okay if you do it yourself if i take <laughs> out a loan <laughs> i take out a loan voluntarily then well, i must you don't think that's kind of barbaric well, well don't, like, don't we own ourselves henry you would be infringing on my rights to take out the loan by telling me i can't take out the loan <laughs> Well, no, but the punishment for the loan well, is that you get sold into slavery. You know, no, the punishment was, for the loan is that I pay it back by any I ever whatever. But, but the person can you sell you and beat you and do whatever no, they want with you. No, they can't oh. beat me. No, they, they can't. can't beat you. Doesn't the no, Bible say they, they can? No. No. Yeah, it does. We, the Bible, Bible talks about your how if you sure beat them, you can't. Uh, well, it says you can't beat them to death, right? But you can still beat them, right? H Henry, Henry let me explain that real quick because it says oh, okay. that if you injure them, the slave goes free. The whole thing is about. Oh no, 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 it says, but it does say you can beat them. It says, you, it can't says beat them. you can't beat them too bad, right? It says if you beat them, it doesn't say you should beat them. And the only thing that's no, there it says is if they die. Henry, it says let me finish. Henry, just let me finish. Henry, just let me finish. Okay, okay. Henry, shut the hell up! You have to, you, you like seriously. You have not stopped talking since I let you like kind of like have part of the mic. So like, he, let, he, let's at least like let the the responses flow. Okay, he he missed a lesson on conditional phrases, fifth grade. All right, let's just let's let Nicholas okay, so, respond. Okay. So the the whole thing is that the only things that are lined out in there are that if you beat your slave, you could have consequences, and if you cause injuries, you could lose your slave. And so um, there, there's nothing about promoting beating slaves or anything. There's protective laws. Now, um, things were done by witnesses. Fathers of houses were the main government. It was a different world. They weren't protecting people for a slap in the face or something. But th there's nothing in there but protections. That's the only thing that's in the scripture. Nowhere does it say, go and beat your slave. Well, no, but it's, it allows for it, right? What do you mean allowed? No, it says if it happens, then you might get a death penalty. Yeah. Or if it happens, you might lose your slave. It says if it happens. No, no, but no, you don't get a death penalty. You only get a death penalty if it dies in a few days or something. Yeah. Okay. okay. The well, point okay. is that it's the point is. Is that it's only if it happens. That's what you it's saying. It's saying if this part. happens, there can be consequences. That's all okay. it's saying. Uh, you guys, Nicholas, if, you, if you have a slave, then you you shouldn't. Here's the thing. Hold hey, on. Nicholas. Hold hey. on. Let's 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 take this back a step because Henry's missing. 
missing a core point of this is that not not everyone that was put in a state of servitude was there necessarily of their own volition or free will uh, amongst the people who would have been put into servant positions are not only those with a debt fiscal or financial but a debt that was perchance even civil where they have perchance they've done something damaging to society or, or civil society itself or to one of the households and would then put in a, a servant type of position to that household to repay the debt that they've done. This does not mean that these are necessarily, you know, peaceful people. Now, Henry, your issue is, is your issue with corporal punishment is, is in pipe dream land. Okay, that, that, that's candy canes and lollipops and unicorns. Okay, the issue is if you have such a, a better idea, um, other than corporal punishment, what you need to do is you need to take it to the modern prison systems and go get your Nobel Prize. Oh, Otherwise, you need to accept the fact that at certain points, despite preference, despite uh, best case scenarios, all things considered, force may be needed and corporal punishment in order to keep people under control may be essential uh, or else you just usher in anarchy so okay. well how about this uh, i could take it in this direction then so you're saying it doesn't say you should beat them it says this happens if you do it's so terrible. if we it, it would be okay if we were to treat them like dogs well it's more, we can't, more we can't more abuse... what i said i guess well <laughs> so, yeah well it hey, didn't have I much gotta, to do with what i was hey, saying Henry. But it would it be okay if we treated them like dogs. No, you can't beat them, but you can no. sell them. You can't treat you them can... like animals, Henry. And this is what you don't well, understand. Why not? But we well, can't beat the animals, right? The, no, the well, Bible. We can sell them. We can because the, the Bible, hey, God's hey, law hey, tells hey. us so. That's hold why on. God's law tells us we can't do that. Henry, I got a point for Nick. Henry, they 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 had to be they had to be treated uh, uh, like like people, uh, unlike the cultures around them who didn't, and unlike the the Atlantic slave trade who didn't. The Jews. Jews very much taught the, their servants like people. They had marriage rights. They 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 could not be killed. They could not be beaten uh, mercilessly or without cause or justification. It, it doesn't marriage. say you can't beat them, though, right? Well, Henry, hold on, Henry. <laughs> your your des here's the problem. Number one, you expect the worst of ancient Jews, which is really gross and bigoted. That's number one. <laughs> uh, number two, number two is you need to understand is that all these rules were instigated, controlled, and judged by Sanhedrins. Okay, and Sanhedrins, um, it, with you not looking up the history of the Sanhedrins and their typical stances of judgments, they were always very, very much leaning on the side of the benefit of the doubt for people. You know, even even particularly bloody Sanhedrins were considered to be ones that executed someone every eighty years. Okay, these are not these are not people that, as the atheists like you, try to paint them as you know archaic moral deviants. Okay, they were they were a progressive culture far more above any of their. <laughs> at the time and you're being bigoted you're being bigoted in some of your approaches against <laughs> against ancient jews yes against well you're jews. assuming that they did like vile things when you have no historical record of that right and well, you're they, just, they, they had slaves and they sacrificed animals oh my god like, like, hey, can i bring up the bible is that okay yeah, there's there's also yeah. modern countries that have slaves that don't have any other. Yeah, medicine. they're fucked up too. <laughs> well, well, Henry, why don't you go on your high uh, horse and go fix their economic problems so they don't have to rely on what slavery? What the fuck? Well, you want me to go um, do that? I, I have to do that before well, I can complain you about you guys issue, advocating yeah, for slavery. Yeah, I think you're <laughs> <laughs> because Henry, the problem is you're not willing to consider the fact that people, and certainly ancient cultures, that have limited economic methods may need to rely upon servitude as a primary economic force, especially if all of their. You guys were saying it would be, so you don't think it's okay to do yeah. now, right? What? Well, it depends. It depends. There's oh, there's so countries do. that do do it now. That no, we I mean, and now in America, would it be okay? No, because well, we well, have, Henry, we have you're benefiting off it. a civil society that has allowed us to progress beyond needing such things like that. But there are countries that don't have that method, and they are operating in the highest moral standard they possibly can, based well, upon where the, the fuck are they holding stuff. slaves it's, right now? Well, that they're not, doing it Korea, Burundi, Yemen, uh, North Korea. And you think they're doing it in a moral fashion, fashion in, those in those fact, Muslim countries? In fact, Henry, in, in your grotesque ignorance, let me share this other little okay. factoid with you, so you know how gross you are. Um, actually, in, in truth, that the UN and uh, the EU are sending gobs of money at these countries that have slavery 
because what they want to do is they want to convince the countries to either a cultivate economies to rely upon slavery less or to institute regulatory uh, infrastructure to keep the the slavery humanized instead of its typical black mar market counterparts which tend to indulge in the sex slavery of children so, so you think so, slavery is okay if you're economically desperate uh, unless you have another option, Henry, you're just a bigoted moral oh, monster. Jesus Christ. So, so unless you have <laughs> so a better fun, option, man. Henry, unless you have a better option economically to propose, then all you are is speaking from your ivory tower. Oh, yeah, well, I, I mean, I believe bad, in the individual. But I don't know how to fix it. I think it's fucked up to treat people that way. Well, I think your brain is... is can, I, can I ask Henry a question? Are you familiar at all with what the slave master relationship was in the scriptures. You know, words are not univocal. You guys you talk. Have... I need to get a bowl of something to eat. Hold on. Uh, words, mean, do, words, do have different, words do have different meanings depending on the context in which they're used. Well, do you, I have, do you have any do you have any understanding? I mean, this shit wasn't written of... down in English, so you're going to yeah. like... I have a question have for you, Jill. Do we want to get Henry talking again when we could be talking to Orge and each other instead? Yeah, really. Well, I just had a question. If he really understood yeah, I the relationship, I want to go to the Bible his... about this, not whatever. Yeah, Henry. yeah talk to Orge. Go ahead. Well, I still want to address the true Scotsman fallacy real quick because the Bible defines Christianity. And so when we use the biblical definition of Christianity, we're not committing any kind of true Scotsman fallacy. That's really unfair. Exactly. Uh, Christianity is um, Christianos. It means slave to Christ. Um, yeah. Those who know him hear his voice, but um, we obey him. So we're saved by grace through faith unto good works, which were before yes. ordained and were known by our fruit and stuff. And so the Bible gives guides on how to identify real Christians or not. So when we say that, like, um, they were doing that horrible slavery and hypocrisy to themselves, the Bible says that they're not Christians. It's not fair to accuse us of a no true Scotsman fallacy. And we have prescriptions that are not enslaving people and treating right. them like animals or whatever. Let's go to those prescriptions then. Uh, I'm assuming Exodus 21 is what you're referring to about the beating slaves and stuff like that. Henry too, right? No. no. I'm not talking. I don't. I don't apply the um, the laws regarding, uh, and those are actually if then laws, like in the penalties of ancient uh, whatever Israelites to Christian in modern society. That would be ridiculous and stupid. Well, the conversation was Nicholas was bringing up the conversation about if you be a slave. You get punished. Slaves have marriage yeah. rights. That's all. Yeah, we, 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 we have testament. some different. Sorry to interrupt. We have some different perspectives here. So I agree with everything I said, and I also agree with everything Smokey said. And that's the best way I can summarize my view on it. Uh, I agree with what you guys said. I'm just saying that none of this applies to Christians. So I don't, I don't like right well, now. We don't have we don't have indentured servants now. But you I think guess somehow the conversation must have diverted then. None of. Uh, None of this would be okay if we did economically. It would help us. Okay, and if we did, the, those are the rules we, we, we would follow. Yeah, you treat them just like we treat dogs right now. They, you have to demonstrate them. that well, we're being treated dogs like dogs. Them, just, just because well, we you see the words, that. just because you see the word "slave," does not mean they were being treated by dogs. You're like, you're like equivocating dogs, on like you're you're defining the word "slave" well, he's and equating it to a dog. When that wasn't the case, that's why I asked if he was familiar with the slave master relationship in the scriptures. I think he, he's, well, what, he's, what is it that you well, can no, do Henry, to a dog Henry, right Henry now in our just, society that you couldn't do to a slave? Back Henry, then? Henry is just bigoted against the ancient Jews. It's really that simple. Jesus that's the only Christ. thing he's given I, is a bigoted I, assumption. It's I get it against else. savages. He's ignorant. he's ignorant, and perhaps he needs to be educated. I mean, read the story of be, Abraham. Educated. Yeah, read the story of Abraham and Eleazar, who was his slave. The scripture says that he would, Eleazar, the slave, would have inherited all of Abraham's wealth had Abraham not had Isaac, his first son. So the slave, so the slave master relationship was more akin to uh, ad an adoption into well, the You family. didn't answer my question. Is there what anything I, that we can do to a dog in our society today they couldn't do to a slave in their society? Let me finish, and that should let be them poop in the street. Let me finish, and that should be let, okay. me finish, let me finish, please, and that should be evident because a dog cannot inherit all of your wealth, genius. No, no, you so didn't Eleazar, understand the question. So Eleazar, Eleazar, 
his slave would have inherited all of Abraham's wealth had Abraham. Oh, not there's not dogs that don't inherit people's wealth in our no, society today. No, that no, absolutely no, happens. People no, people no. leave their inheritance to animals. Yes, they okay, do. Well, maybe no, in our society, no, we don't have God. I was uh, asking, and had nothing to do with my question. My no, question was: no, there's he's anything in, guys, you can do to a movie. dog right now that no, they couldn't do to a slave? He's just being facetious. You don't want to answer the question. You don't have times. You can't you can't neuter a person. <laughs> okay. Oh, they couldn't? Why not? Put it down if it's mean. We're gonna say you couldn't do that in the Bible. Um, yeah, actually in in the old testament Israel, that would have been very, very criminal in every single situation. So Daniel is right. I just gotta say that like oh, wait, we, are, we are told not to answer a fool according to his foolishness, oh, okay. but to answer the fool according to his <laughs> foolishness. So let's not say we're gonna teach Henry. That is that's the wrong way to go about it, according to our scriptures. He has proven that he's just like trolling us and annoying. <laughs> yeah, clearly. When Henry, I, I don't know if you really want, want the answers so much. I mean, clearly not. Well, I mean, you're kind of just, I'm sorry, but like focus in this milieu of kind of like, you know, assuming whatever you want to assume about the culture without a lot of context and also not even really, you know, recognizing the fact that servitude as like, it's just kind of inseparable from civil society. Like you just, you will always need it in one shape or another or one form or fashion. Even today, we still call our, our uh, slaves, you know, property of the state. Even our 13th amendment is set to protect slavery in the instances of oh, prostitution. God. Well, Henry, go read it. It's right there oh, for no, you. No, you're doing the like the Ava DuVernay fucking the thirteenth documentary shit. Like, I mean Well dude, it, it's a valid argument. Every every person not her if, argument. If your issue <laughs> yeah, by man, the way, her. Henry, if your issue is that it's not okay to own people as property, okay, that is that is what every single prisoner has been. Since no, since they're wards time. of the state. That's a different thing. They are owned. No, by you can't the state. sell them. They they are owned as capital no. by the state. Now, whether or not they are transferable, the whether hold on, whether or not they are transferable is something else entirely. That has to do with an economic venue, but it does not change their status as the slaves and property of society, the society that they happen to have damaged. Okay. That's always, always, always been the case. And guess what? If you don't have something like that, you don't have a society and you certainly don't have anything that, that borders on anything you could define as civil. Oh my you're, God. Just, you're just not operating in reality, Henry. Oh. It's just the, the standard. So we have to have possible. slaves or we can't have a society? That's kind of what you're saying? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you cannot have a civil society unless you have some form of servitude. Yes, absolutely. It's impossible. Irony. Well, when people when people <laughs> stop being evil because they look well, Henry, to Christ on me. the cross, then the problem will be solved. But as long as you just want to ignore the truth, you're part of the whole reason that it's happening, Henry, and we're not. The passage I was referring to is in Genesis 15, where Abraham would have given all of his property, his entire estate to a slave. I would love to be a slave back then. Yeah, slave I told you, people give their well, estates to dogs. So. Sure, sure <laughs> they do. Yeah, sure there's they no, do. Other, yeah. there's no other culture, unless maybe you could point to one. There's no other culture I can think of where they would actually had such a strong relationship between the slave and the slave master that they actually institute a system called the bond slave where they could actually agree and desire to commit themselves to their slave master for the rest of their natural lives. Now, now in what, in what universe would you ever be able to create such a system and have people actually proactively take advantage of it to where it's called for and wanted if this is entirely what you painted as and what all the atheist degenerate brain dead morons painted as as a culture of people that just abused slaves like the atlantic slave trade oh, or i don't think they just abused them well then, then i think there were slaves that were treated well even in america under the atlantic slave trade well yeah. the well, they, they like the fact that you can point to like yeah, sure, you know that, that it's possible that it's going to be treated well. What you're missing is the standard of care 
was completely different. You could have <laughs> anecdotal evidences on both sides of the fence. That's not my point, Henry. You're missing the point. I would, I would contend, Henry, and I would argue any of the Africans that participated in the Atlantic slave trade would have probably likely sold one of their limbs to have had the opportunity to serve as a Jewish slave back in the Middle East in ancient times. Your, uh, your lack of awareness of what, it depends. what this, like, this is what me, I wanted to get back to. Thing that for me, it's about the principle. Henry, I, I think it's Henry. Okay, go ahead, man. That's someone else. That let the other atheists in the room talk. Yeah, I'll please. try. I know. I, I, <laughs> uh, that's I what I wanted to get back to. The argument we're talking mm -hmm. about, um, Dan or whatever his name is, didn't like it. But the argument was how slaves are treated in ancient Israel, right? That was the argument. That's the whole sure. this kind of thing. If that's if that's what we want to use as at least our base. Well, that's what you just said, right, Smokey? Well. Well, again, maybe you're trying to paint me into into a corner. You're desperate to try and make a gotcha point, but but the, the thing you need to understand too is that these rules and regulations that were passed down to the Jews at their time has to function for them with what they have access to. Sure, it's sure. Not, it's not like us in our modern day where we have all these roads and firefighters and prison systems and infrastructure and defenses and all the things that we have access to, which allows us to attain a slightly higher version of civil structure does not change the base moral codes behind it. Yes. Um, your argument kind of sounds like society needs slavery and it's process steps, right? Is that oh, kind of what sure. in, some, in some way, shape or form, there will have to be some type of servitude master slave system of some kind. Absolutely. In the uh, steps of civilization. Slave. Sure. Yeah. And the thing, what all these rules you're bringing up, the African slaves would chop off their arms to be slaves in ancient I Israel. Those rules are found where? In well, the Bible, where? In the Bible, of course, in the Bible. Yeah, what, 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 because I found Exodus 21. Is that where you guys are getting your verses uh, from too? Yes, you that's know? where I'm getting mine from. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And it says, um, I guess to the beating things, uh, 2021. Yeah, I'm ready um, to clarify this. The owner should not be punished, right? I think I, that's what he's trying to get at. We keep unpacking this, but I'll let Nicholas respond, and then I have one more to zero it in real hard. <laughs> on okay. On that one. Go ahead, Nicholas. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, what's going on there is that word punish refers to a death sentence, and when it says they will not be punished, it refers to not getting the death sentence and then it continues to say things such as if they get injured they'll be set free and to list more protections for lesser matters so when it says not punished that's just referring to specifically the death penalty it's sure. in context I, I think that's what henry was trying to say as my assumption i think henry was quoting that verse so we might it, we might have avoided a lot of conversation had stop me if this is crazy opened our bibles <laughs> You also have Leviticus 19. But yeah. the, the um, thing I wanted to bring up is verse 2 says all these rules, unless it's not someplace I miss, are for Hebrew slaves. No, no, they're for the, the foreigner as well as the... But where does it say that then? Because Leviticus verse 2, 19, if you buy Hebrew slave... Deuteronomy chapter 10. <laughs> so treat the foreigner living among you as your native born. <laughs> Because you were okay, um, I want to hone in on this because it really looks like it's for this specific context. If you buy an Hebrew servant, six years he shall serve, and in the seventh he shall go free for nothing. If yes. he came of himself, so forth, so on, etc. Um, and if a man sell his daughter, so we're now, and if he does not these three unto her without money, he that smiteth the man so that he dies shall surely be put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, um, presumptuously against his neighbor to slay him. Yeah, so we actually switch from that topic and get back to slavery later. So that context yes. of only Hebrew does not apply later. Well, then you're going to have to uh, explain that to me because it doesn't say that the, the slavery conversation suddenly becomes non-Hebrew. So where are you getting that justification? Well, well, it, the, that the specific topic references them being Hebrew. Then it goes into other topics, and then it goes to slavery, but not specifying that they're Hebrew. Also, so I don't, I don't know what more I can say about it except that you're assuming it in the text and it's not there. See, well, what, see what happens when you only read part of the Bible. This, this is what 
the result is. Exodus 22, which is one chapter after Exodus 21, the, the, the Bible quote mine that you keep using, says you must not exploit or oppress a foreign resident for you yourselves were foreigners in the land of Egypt. So the Egyptians were uh, actually, the Israelites were, were vassal, were a vassal state to the Egyptians, meaning they served the Egyptians. They were the lower class in the Egyptian society. And they worked and they did what the Egyptians told them to do, sort of like in America today. They were not there involuntarily, by the way. They could have left any time they felt what, like what it. What verse is that exactly? I'm trying to Exodus find it. Exodus 22, verse 21. 21, so, thank so you. So we need to stop. We need to, and Smokey mentioned this, but it just went right over your head. These people were there voluntarily, other than the POWs, other than the prisoners of war and the prisoners. There, you also could pay restitution. You can work as a slave to lessen your jail sentence. So other than those cases, and of course, um, you, you know, people who owe the debt, you better pay it back. You should pay it back. Um, everyone there is there voluntarily. Okay? Yes, I'm not yeah. arguing that's incorrect. Okay. So then that's, that, that's well, the end my, of the story then. No. <laughs> so if they're what there voluntarily. Was, and what problem. Nicholas was arguing was that the rules for Hebrew slaves, which are looser, I'm agreeing with Smokey, I'm agreeing with you guys, looser than general, they, are, they were different for, let's say, the war captives, as you said, because that's all over the and, Bible, uh, capturing slaves after conquest, right? There's no, that, that's those and, are POWs, sir. The POWs, wait, the prisoners wait, of war. Only, yes, we still capture potato, prisoners potato. of war today. And and again, I'm no Bible scholar, right? But you guys make the connection between uh, Deuteronomy 10, uh, or sorry, Exodus 22, 24, you said, something like that? Exodus 22, 21, do not mistreat, oppress a foreigner. You make a connection between that verse and uh, well, later these, in these, Exodus these 21, these people and, coming would have been foreigners, right? They would have been coming from other nations. Not they're not Israelites, right? The I guess who come from other nations would have been foreigners, correct? So the thing I and again, hey, I'm no Bible expert. Maybe I am misreading this. Who knows? But there seems to be a jump that only benefits you, and that's why you make that connection. The Bible it's is not the next explicit chapter. About it's it's the next it's the next chapter. That would be considered immediate context. The Bible goes into explicit detail about Hebrew slaves, but does not go sure. into detail there are, there are about non-Hebrew slaves. There are that's that, that's are absolutely different. untrue. The Hebrew part, it's right here in the text. The Hebrew part addresses the six years and seven years going free yes. and some more details. Yes. Then they go off the topic of slavery into other topics and then they go to the topic of slavery and yeah. i mean it's i really gotta same. push this that there, there's no basis to assume that this later talk of slavery is only hebrew because the rules in the first paragraph specified hebrew um because in, in that case i'm gonna have to I, the way i read it as a book if you're all in the same chapter you all talk about the same to oh, topic. There, there are no chapters originally that's just well, made i know so they were all just the, they're added are, they're yeah. added so that we can reference so that we can talk about where yes. we're looking so um yeah so you can't use the the chapter thing well also, i would go to leviticus 19 which which is um which says don't seek revenge or bear grudge against any of your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. So the Bible is 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 replete with instructions on how to treat foreigners fairly and with dignity and respect. So I, I don't get you taking one passage which which was explained about beating and suggest that that was a, a you know something that the Israelites would be allowed to do um, when we have countless Numbers chapter ten if. Um, we will share with you whatever good things the Lord gives us if you come oh, with wow. us. So this was how they treated the foreigner. The foreigner was adopted into their family as one of their own, and they would they would 
consequently adopted. Now you jump in to make it sound all rosy and wonderful. It was. Into their family. It, it was. Well, yeah. or, or, yeah, that's the whole point is that Messiah made all this obvious. I'm a slave to him and it's awesome. I mean, to give that up, I'd have to give up so much. I benefit so much from it. And that's what Jill is saying. I mean, maybe it wasn't always equally rosy and stuff, but when we talk about the real picture of it, the whole idea is let's do our best and we share that with others and benefit them and they benefit us. And, um, just a really awesome right. thing. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little frustrated with the, with the, the roundabout stuff now, leading to the whole slavery thing. I appreciate it. Yeah, guys, thank you for all this and all the contribution and stuff. But I really want to just kind of probably, probably just do a bullseye on this final BS with the B. I gotta go to bed soon anyway. So, so that's sure. fine. That's fine. Let's let's ask a question here. Um, the the contemporary cultures surrounding the Jews did not have any such forces <laughs> about beating their slaves. So would you guys say that they're superior? um i <laughs> if i i guess if i was to take your analogy if i had to choose to be a chattel slave in 1820 or a, a hebrew debt slave in 400 bc or whatever it would be i would probably choose not to be the chattel slave Okay, well, that well your question, but. not really. It doesn't really answer my question because we need to we need to draw a line on this because it's been brought up a, a multiple times by both you and Henry. So I really need to be able to put a bullseye on this. And here's here's the issue. <clears throat> You make you guys like to use that verse. You like to capitalize on it. You like to throw it at us at it all the time. The other option is that verse doesn't exist. Okay, and the only way that that verse would not exist would mean that if the Jews, just like all the other cultures around them, where it was perfectly okay to beat the slave to literal absolute death. In fact, even in the um, Assyrian culture, it was okay to for the uh, male, uh, I'm sorry, the female house member, the female head of the house, the wife, to actually torture a female slave just for looking at them indignantly. I don't think that's true. It is true. There, well, no, I think there's another way around that. You could just have a verse that says, "Don't have slaves." Yeah, yeah. If you do that, Henry, <laughs> what you do? What you do, Henry? When you do see this, Henry, when you do that, you're an immoral, disgusting, stupid moron. God. Not have slaves. Let me finish. Immoral? Let me finish. Yeah, because what happens <laughs> okay. is then you create a isolated vacuum culture that can't compete economically with all of those around it, they'll go extinct and they'll die and we, out. We did pretty well in America with that right yeah, no, because We have a lot of infrastructure and benefits like central currency and regulated trade, Henry, that those people didn't have because, again, you're a presentist bigot. Who's interested in judging ancient cultures by all the ivory first world benefits that you enjoy okay. that let you do such a thing. You're a disgusting... No, 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 I, 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 no, I, I can talk to you about it right um, now. You guys it would be okay right Henry, now Henry, to sell ourselves into slavery. Henry, uh, if, if if there was no central currency, Henry, and rule of law broke down, you'd be selling yourself into slavery tomorrow because you're going to be wanting to look for whoever happens to have the most resources and can provide you protection where you can offer the only thing you'll have access to, which is your personal labor, you hypocritical sack of subhuman crap. Now, I think that that, that hopefully kind of answers your question to understand that the reason the verse is there is to mitigate the fact that these people had a standard of of treatment towards their slaves to treat them like actual human beings to where there were regulations on the how they had to be treated with the with the eradication of this verse is the license to treat them however which which way they wanted the problem is you atheists do not give the text the benefit of the doubt when it does something good you're only looking for opportunities to nitpick it as something bad and that's where you make those types of errors in your judgment understanding that god was attempting to work within a free will society by providing structured laws that would not lead to their extinction, that would keep them within a set frame of reference, but also allow them to operate and compete in the economies of their neighbors. This oh, is, man. you guys need to understand that you cannot, if you were God handing out the dictation, just like Henry, the moron God, like if Henry, the Jews would have been extinct right away, which maybe Henry hates the Jews. That's why he wishes they would be extinct. But if you were a moron <laughs> idiot God like Henry, you would tell them no more slavery. 
and then they can't compete. They have no e economy to to rely upon. They end up going extinct. Well, if I were God, they wouldn't have and fucked up the economy in the first place. Yourself, you proved yourself to be an evil, cruel God that passes down laws that your your people can't possibly hold to. If that I were God, they would have a nice economy. There would be abundance. There would no, be no, no need yeah, for no, slavery you and barbarism. Would it, would be, it would be fucking know, wonderful. Henry. Yes, I know. You're Isn't a moron, it? idiot. <laughs> everyone, everyone, <laughs> everyone can, can, enjoy, everyone can enjoy it and become that, sexual deviant or something yes, and, and just go to hell and stuff right. like you'd be an awesome god i'm yeah, sure and deny, Henry. And deny <laughs> you will because every time someone steps out of what oh, henry yeah. wants you know what henry has the exact plan to do <laughs> the economy that he can't surplant with he doesn't have anything to, to say other than not slavery just not slavery because he's an idiot moron god that would make sure that his people went extinct as soon as they listen well, no to they would have plenty of food money it'd be it'd be fucking awesome if no, i was you god would, you would have Xboxes. They would have had Xboxes you, thousands yep, of years you would ago. Violate was God. You would make them. They would have Mountain Dew and Doritos. Yeah, it would be Henry, fucking amazing. Henry, yeah, you are I, I don't think he did a good job Henry, of what Henry, uh, go look up. This and Henry, you are such an extra type of belligerent, stupid. It really blows my <laughs> mind. Go look up the Mouse Utopia experiments and find out what type of world you would have created for the Jews, you degenerate <laughs> moron. I dare you to go right ahead. Go, I, go, I know go, about go, them. Go see, yeah, go see what happens when you operate a society the way you would, Henry, and see what a complete and utter disaster of an idiot you actually are with the things that you throw out there. Go right ahead. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to work for Bill Gates. Henry, I give you so much credit sometimes. You come in here and just yeah, make stupid well, Every now and then, every now and then, we have to be hostile. It's, so. it, well, no, it's not about hostile. I just don't understand. Like all of a sudden, you come into the room sometimes, and half your brain is gone. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, it's because we're disagreeing. That's the reason. I mean, well, well, I, I think um, the propaganda is so thick that he doesn't realize his assumptions are possibly wrong. <laughs> you know. Well, it's well, it's also clearly a little bit of bigotry mixed in here. I don't think, I don't think Agreed. you, I almost don't think you can be an atheist these days with some of the perspectives you take against the Bible and ancient cultures without being a bit of a bigot. It, it, it I mean, it just reeks off you freaking people. Well, my, mine was less about the, my thing was less about the, uh, the stuff about the Bible. It was more about what you guys were saying right now when I was asking, like, like, would it be okay to like. If if people were voluntarily selling themselves into slavery right now, you guys were saying, yeah, that'd be fine. Yes, yes, because they, they would are. Be yes, they are doing that, and we in have America? no method to stop. Not in America, all over the world, Henry. And well, you no. know what? We can't stop it. About America, but... Henry, why are you so stupid? Those <laughs> people that are relying upon slavery don't have the things we have. Hence, they're relying upon slavery. Why don't you? Go over there and tell them, hey, guys, just stop. Just stop doing slavery. That's the big brain atheist talking. Just stop. Just don't do it anymore. Yeah, I have no solutions of how to do anything different or offer you anything better. Do you think it's okay I, to bore yourself I out? Big brain, yeah. I'm our American atheist. And I think prostitution's all right as well. If you Dude, have no other you, are, bro, you are a total joke. Sure. Prostitution no, is, okay. is, is, prostitution is sex outside of well. Henry, Henry, that, Henry, that's sex oh, outside of marriage. Said, he said it's okay to sell yourself as property. You're it's so okay lucky. to sell your body. Well, after prost you prostitution is sex outside of marriage, Henry. That's totally oh, so different. different. Hey, I got to go to <laughs> bed, totally. Silk. I got a last word real quick, please. Go ahead. Or, yeah, go ahead. You can have I would love that. You guys you guys can beat up on Henry more once I go. What a stupid dick. I was just, uh, I was just, you know, looking up everyone's favorite website, Wikipedia, on the issue, and there is some debate as to how well they treat slaves. But in general, it seems to be most people would say slavery in the Bible is more akin to indentured servitude. Yes. Uh, that being said, the closest thing I could find as to rules for slavery does say Leviticus twenty five forty five forty six. Uh, you can take Canaanite slaves for life, but you must not rule over your feather, fellow Israelites ruthlessly. So there were different rules, at least in Leviticus, um, with for vigor, slaves. Vigor. With vigor, and, and if I'll respond to that ever so briefly. That, um, that more specifically would elude to to those taken of foreign nations. Yeah, and, Canaanites. Exactly. And on top of that, it would have had to do with reference of hard labor versus soft like house labor. 
So like, so like you'd consider household labor and you'd have labor like breaking rocks or working in the fields. Sure. So there were certain things that you would say were relegated to the foreigners as their standard of method of things that they could do or, but that, that, well, that was not normative. Now you could, of course, could have foreigners that would be house servants, but the idea that the Jews were not to be put under the forms of um, hard types of servitude as some of the, the degenerates, prisoners of war or, or or actual just legitimate prisoners or deviants of society would have been subjected to. Yeah. I, I got to connect um, that with something real quick too, because that's specifically referring to lifelong instead of the six years and set free in the seventh year. So it ties right back to um, what we were talking about earlier. Sure. Um, but yeah, so again, you know, you guys, I still don't necessarily agree with your biblical uh, stances, but hey, it's part of the conversation, right? And the other thing was, there does seem to be some argument on this topic within Sco Jewish scholars still, again, according to Wikipedia. So you guys may have be all cut, set, and dry, but that doesn't mean there isn't a conversation to be had here. So sure. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's the thing that keeps getting unpacked, but the problem is that I think that it's just atheists want to judge everything from their worldview, their culture, their modern perspective. Yeah, That's yeah. why you guys end up kind of looking at it this way. You know, by the way, the world's gross and we made it that way. And you guys like to pontificate that God should have made it different. But God that was Henry's been, argument, not mine. Well, <laughs> that's fair. But God has a righteous standard yeah. of which atheists have different opinions on things true. too. That's no, that's true. No, that's fair. I didn't mean to throw that at you. Um, you know what and mean. then I guess as my final thing, I want I personally want consider slavery to be a very strong anti-theist argument. I uh, but that's just the way the course happened to travel. So yeah. that's all yeah. I got though. So I gotta head out. Okay, sounds good, man. Well, thanks for being here. Yep. Yeah, take I, care. I, I I appreciate Orge on that, and I um, I agree with him on all of that. The, the thing is that having the spirit of truth in us is a big part of what helps us um, parse out the stuff like, you know, he says there there is controversy in scholarship. There's possibly different ways to interpret it, all that. But um, ultimately, we're turning to Christ through, through the spirit that he gave us, and that um, is what guides us well, through the what? possibilities to the right one of them. What we are deprived